would that mean to you to become world number one again, the oldest world number one, and five years on since you last did it? I mean, it would be absolutely incredible, you know. Um, can't believe I'm, I'm this close, but uh, number one has never been simple, never been, uh, never been easy to get there. So I know it's going to be a lot of hard work for me this week, mentally, um, just to cope with everything. Um, just also not thinking too far ahead of maybe next week, following week, what, what could it mean to me? Because I'm not there yet, and as long as you're not world number one, um, you're not. So it's, it's that simple, but uh, I think it would mean a lot to also my team, uh, my family, my fans, you know, everybody who's been so supportive along the way. Um, anyway, my comeback since 16 has been um, so incredible that uh, we're already happy as is, but um, I thought I'd give it a go and, and see if I can get to world number one this week. He's a magnificent mover. Uh, he's like Brezhnikov. Um, he doesn't put a lot of strain on his body. That's something that you're sort of born with, and, and, and maybe to some degree you're, you're helped out by certain people around you. You touched on it briefly there, the mental aspect of your game. So you arrive here after winning a 20th Grand Slam <coughs> in Australia. How do you bring yourself back down to earth and start over again? <laughs> well, I, I took a rest, number one, uh, you know, in the first week right after the Australian Open. Uh, we were home with uh, friends and family, but uh, especially family, just getting away from it all because there was a lot of people in Australia. And now there's a lot of people back in Switzerland again visiting us. So, um, you know, I, if I'm here, it's because I really want to be here and really want to give it a give it a chance and see what happens you know and uh, um, my family my wife my friends my coaching team everybody needs to be on board with this decision really but at the end of the day in my gut I need to feel that's the right thing that I'm doing and not just that it's okay to do or I'm supposed to be doing this this is the wrong reason to come to come here um, but honestly I'm like I said memories are very strong from this tournament it is one of my favorite uh, I love playing here I won here I think in 2012 also when I came so I know it suits me well this tournament and it's not far away from home so that also made the decision much easier he absolutely which is a unique thing that if you had to pick one thing that I was, was jealous of of Roger Federer would be his absolute like love and joy to just be out out there playing, which most of us feel felt or feel more angst. Uh, you're going through this turmoil. You're battling yourself. You're battling your opponent. You're, you're part of your mind's, you know, looking at the glass half empty, and you've got to work at making sure you're looking at it more the glass half full. And so um, he has this unique ability, even when times of struggle, for him, it's all relative, obviously, but he brushes that off a lot more easily than anyone. And that's an incredible quality to have. To me, the, the qualities that, are, uh, that separate you aren't like how big your forehand is and the serve, and the, it's, it's your heart and your under, ability to sort of dig in when things are going badly and learn from your mistakes, which for me was easier to do when you were younger than older. All those combination of things have allowed Roger, even though having said all that, it's still like beyond belief. It's one of the most craziest things that I've ever seen in the 25 years I've been doing commentary and the additional 15 I've played to see a guy at that age play at that level and move better than he did when he was, to me, 28. I mean, maybe not when he was 25 or 26. I don't understand how the hell he's doing it. Um, but it, it, it's, it's truly like amazing to watch. How are you? Great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Great. Good luck. Thank you.